My cello is currently in the shop because I discovered that I had nearly a foot long crack in the front of my cello. And I only noticed it because I had my hands underneath just sort of fiddling around with the, the belly during a rehearsal break. And I felt this, this line underneath the, the fingerboard. And lo and behold, I did have a crack on my instrument. My instrument is very old. It's been repaired numerous times. I had a lot of performing to do and the timing was terrible on this. And so I had to go to a string shop and try to find the best rental instrument I could. And what compounds the problem is that I play on a 7-8 cello. And so finding rentals for 7-8 size players is a little bit harder than finding a full size. But I did find one. But what this has done for me is it has made me empathize with you all. And those of you who are renting instruments or maybe you've purchased an instrument that fits your budget and that's what you have to have because that's what you can afford and I get that. But I was playing and thinking I have to make this instrument sound better because where I'm playing people expect a good instrument. So I was thinking really quick about some of the things that I could do to make this cello sound better and I thought I would share them with you so that um, maybe you can try some of these things with your instrument to get it to sound a little bit better. Now, when I first played this instrument, I tried it out. I didn't love it, but I knew that was the only choice I had. I only had that one day to find an instrument. And when I got home, I realized that I had a spare set of, of strings that was already used. And I used the Verisum solo strings. They project well, they sound smooth and warm. And I do change them often. So the set that I had here was probably only three to four months old. They were worn past where I would want them to be um, on my regular cello, but I thought, you know, that's probably going to be an improvement if I change these out. So what I did is I changed out the A and the D to, from what was on here, which I wasn't even sure what they were, but I changed those out to the Verisum Solo. And what that did is it immediately cut off this sort of harshness that I was hearing from the A and D strings. Now, one of the things that I regularly hear from uh, my beginning students is that the A string when they play just sounds tinny and bright and you know just not a beautiful tone that we want to hear when we listen to the cello. And my first recommendation is always to change out the A string. One string that I always recommend is the Larson Soft A. Now the Soft A definitely brings down all those higher overtones and it makes the A string sound a lot more even. But immediately I heard a big difference. So what was sounding very, uh, very brilliant, not in a good way to me, was when I was playing on the A and D string, they didn't sound even. And that's the first thing that I noticed is that I'm used to an instrument that when I play across the strings, everything seems very connected, very even. The timbre works from the A string all the way to the C string. And this had a very sharp, edgy tone on the A string and the D string that didn't necessarily match with the G and C string. But changing my strings, uh, made a big difference. It still had a little bit of that brassiness, but it was toned way down and I felt like it was more even. So that's the first thing I did. The second thing I did was it had the craziest wolf tone on this cello. Like if you don't, if you've never heard a wolf tone or you, you haven't encountered that yet, um, it, it's really, I've dampened it so. That's a wolf tone. It's the beast that we always encounter with any cello. Every cello has a wolf tone. Some wolf tones are much worse than others. But this one had an unusually uh, feisty wolf tone that I needed to, to deal with. I have two wolf eliminators. One is the Krentz, uh wolf eliminator and that's a fabulous wolf tone eliminator and that is basically a strong magnet that goes um, on the belly of the instrument where you can move that and and adjust the, the tone quality and you know fix the wolf i have put on here this little brass wolf eliminator and that just basically absorbs that sound in that particular location now i had to move that brass piece pretty close to the bridge the closer you get that wolf tone towards the bridge um, the more it dampens this whole sound of the instrument. But I found that that was the better of two evils. So that was the second thing I did. 
The next thing you can try, number three, is wipe your strings often. So I, I have found that um, when you have an instrument that doesn't project as evenly as maybe a higher end instrument, you really can't have any excess rosin on there because it just it just chokes the string and makes that harshness even worse. So you have to make sure that you really clean those strings after every use. The other thing you can try, depending on how old the strings are, and again, this is a little bit of a controversial thing, but um, people that I've told this to who have actually tried it are amazed at what it does. But if you get a little bit of rubbing alcohol and you put it on a cloth away from your cello, just a little dab on there, and then you clean your strings just right here where the rosin collects, you'll find that the strings definitely resonate better. They sound smoother. It's easier to bow. So that's another thing you can try if your, if your rental cello is just not cutting it for you. And the last thing that you can try to avoid is over rosining your bow. And I know a lot of newer players love that, uh, rosin cake and really putting a lot of rosin on there because they really want to grab the string and you know if you were to you will see a puff a, a plume of <laughs> rosin dust uh, on a lot of beginners bows now the problem with that is that the quality of the rosin that often comes with a rental instrument is not always going to be the best and and so what it tends to do is have a harsher sound on your instrument and it gunks the strings up pretty quickly and too much rosin really just gives you a gritty sound more so than a smooth tone. So those are some things that I did. I made this playable for um, a short period and I get to take it back today because my cello is ready and I get to go pick it up and have my cello game. Anyway, if you'd like to learn more about cello discovery, go check out cellodiscovery.com. And in the meantime, go ahead and subscribe to my channel below because I'll have lots more tutorials for you and little tidbits of information um, from time to time. So thanks for watching.